Okay. Uh, good. Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, it's all the time zone, but uh, good afternoon for everyone. And good, uh, so today I will talk about the complex conjugate invariants of Clifford group. And uh, uh, first, uh, uh, my talk will be a continuation of the talk of Professor Banai. And uh, Professor Banai has talked about uh, uh, how to give uh, an explicit construction for uh, general uh, unitary designs. Uh, now my talk mostly we will focus on uh, small designs that is for practical use. Uh, in particular, we will later show that there are four designs for both unitary designs and the so-called complex projective designs. And uh, this is our motivation and uh, we want to construct them. And uh, let's review what is the unitary design. As Professor Bayona has mentioned that uh, unit uh, design theory mostly try to use a discrete subset to approximate the whole space. Uh, in the sense of uh, you have same average for polynomials or functions over the finite set and over the whole space. And in particular for the unitary group uh, case, uh, if you have a collection of unitary matrices, and uh, if you have the same average for the t's tensor power in, uh, as well as its complex conjugate, uh, you have the same average over the finite sets and over the whole space, then we call this finite subset called a unitary t design. And in particular, if you have chosen uh, of set which itself is a group, then it's called a unitary group. Now, let me explain the other word which appear in my title. It's complex Clifford group. Uh, earlier, it, you have seen that uh, uh, the Clifford group it has kind of complicated in uh, mathematics representation. Here, I will give an uh, representation which is uh, relatively easier to understand in the sense of physics. Well, uh, the complex Clifford group, you can regard them as a kind of uh, a collection of uh, operations you can, uh, you can uh, act on a quantum system. In particular here, uh, the Clifford group chi m, it's uh, acting on m qubits. For each qubit, well, we take the classical space uh, in the, uh, the quantum state is in C2, where it has an orthonormal basis, usually denoted by uh, ket zero and ket one. And uh, there are some generators of this group and uh, you, you one call, also call them quantum gates. The first gate is called phase gate. Essentially it keep, keeps the uh, first uh, vector in the basis uh, invariant and uh, uh, change the phase by 90 degrees, so uh, times i for the se uh, second vector. So uh, you can see the matrix representation is the diagonal matrix one and i. Uh, the second uh, quantum gate is called Hardman gate and it is used to, gen uh, to create uh, the entanglements. Um, it, it's uh, not, uh, non, uh, not exactly speaking, but here, uh, it kind of uh, the key point to why quantum com uh, computation can works uh, very efficiently. Essentially, it's uh, uh, when it acts on the first vector, it becomes a mixture of the, the two uh, base vectors. And if you act on the other vector, it's also a mixture, but uh, uh, they are differ by a sign. Or in other words, uh, you can see. Uh, if you uh, think of in the plan, then it kind of rotates the uh, basis by 90 degrees in, in some sense. So the, uh, it is also represented by the Hardman matrix and uh, where it's got its name. Uh, the other gate is called controlled knot. Now this uh, gate is not acting on one qubit, it is acting on two qubits. So uh, it uses the first qubit to control the, uh, the second qubit. If the first qubit is uh, in state cat zero, then everything remains the same. But if the uh, first qubit is uh, in state cat one, then you flip the 
the second qubit. So you can see that the matrix representation is uh, this uh, four, pi, four by four matrix because it's acting on two qubits. Now, the complex Clifford group is essentially generated by all these gates, but uh, uh, with the remark that uh, the first two gates, they can act on each qubit. You can choose any qubit and act uh, on them. And uh, the last gate, you can act them on any pair of qubits. So this is how the complex careful group is generated. And uh, uh, the complex careful groups are already good in the sense they are already unitary three designs and it is investigated by Drew, Quinn, Grasso and Gross. They published paper that uh, are not exactly right, it's in archive that the uh, complex careful group fails gratefully to be a unitary four design. It means that it is a unitary three design and uh, kind of very close to a unitary four design. And uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, people are trying to uh, find the unitary T groups. And uh, in the paper, Banai, Navarro, Reese, and Tep, uh, earlier I have already mentioned by Banai that uh, they kind of classify the unitary uh, T groups, uh, that is, all unitary T groups for T at least two, that is trans at least two, and uh, in any dimension that at least two, they classify all of them. And in particular, there is no way to get a unitary T group for uh, three dimension at least three. And uh, uh, in the case of quantum uh, computing, that uh, the dimension is always, uh, usually, not, maybe, maybe not always, uh, is usually the power of two, so except the, except the trivial case that you have only one qubit, then it's in dimension two. Then any, you have, if you have two qubits, it's already in dimension four. So as you can see that in this sense, uh, uh, you cannot find good uh, unitary four designs for a large quantum system. So we try to find the unitary four designs, even if it is not a group. And uh, aside from, Already mentioned the unitary designs. Uh, here we also uh, con uh, consider so-called complex projective design. Uh, it is for mathematicians. It's essentially complex spherical designs. Uh, the unitary design is a design on the space of quantum operators. That is unitary transformation. And uh, the complex projective design is a design on the space of quantum states. That is uh, where the operators action act on. They are unit vectors on the complex sphere. So what is a complex projective design? It says essentially that you choose a subset of the complex sphere. And if the average is the same of the final set and over that complex sphere for the functions, which are taken from homogeneous polynomials with degree T in coordinates of the uh, 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 CD, as well as the complex languages. So, uh, we will construct not only uh, unitary designs, but also complex projective design uh, and both four designs for practical use. That four design is essentially for the smallest non-trivial quantum system that is two qubit. So uh, in this talk, essentially the results are these two results. The first is a complex projective Four designs on C to the two to the m uh, can be constructed from an orbit of complex Clifford group chi m. Uh, m is a genus here, and also the number of qubits. And it will, moreover, it will automatically become a projective phi design. And another result have already been mentioned, uh, not not exactly, uh, is the unit four design on U four can be constructed from complex Clifford group chi two. Uh, Previous talk mentioned that also a unit four design U4, but uh, that one is uh, constructed from STP43. So uh, here is a remark that uh, we constructed several unit four designs on U4, and uh, more generally, we can construct uh, uh, general designs, arbitrary unit T designs on UD4, arbitrary D, T, and D. And uh, uh, 
the, the one which constructed from complex clifford group is the smallest one among known unitary four design. Probably someone will find a better design, but so far it is the smallest one, so best for practical use. So uh, now I will explain how we obtained our results. Uh, we will investigate the invariance of complex paper group. Uh, first, here is a theorem uh, by Rooney. Uh, the uh, complex uh, invariance have a homogeneity invariance have already been classified or characterized by Rooney. It says that space of homogeneous invariance of degree n for the complex clear for group chi m is spanned by so called complete weight enumerators. Uh, where uh, enumerators of some kind code, where the code ranges over all binary W even self to the codes of SN. So I will explain all the, uh, the, the names here. The first is that, what is the code? An Indian code is just a subspace of a finite, uh, of a finite linear space where over it is chosen from over a finite field. Uh, in particular, we are over the characteristic of the field is two here. And uh, an NK code is that a finite subspace of uh, the linear space FQ to the N. And uh, for each uh, element you choose, that is a, a vector in this space, uh, the weight is defined to be the number of non zero entries. And uh, the the two vectors are called orthogonal if their inner pro the usual inner product is zero. Uh, here it's calculated over a finite field. And the, the dual code is, uh, is the vectors which are orthogonal to every, uh, every code word you've already chosen. So uh, it kind of kind of orthogonal complex, but here it's over a finite field, not over the uh, real or complex field. And uh, in this case, uh, it is possible that uh, a vector is orthogonal to itself, and a code is called a self orthogonal if uh, it is contained inside its dual, and it's called self dual if it is exactly equal to its dual. So. Uh, another word on this band is the complete weight enumerator. Uh, it is essentially a polynomial which record, uh, uh, records all the, uh, all the code words uh, formally in a, in, a sense, in a shape of a, a polynomial. That is, uh, you're running over all the code words you've chosen and uh, each variable represents the, uh, the, the, uh, the possible entry and uh, you record how many times each, uh, uh, each uh, entry which appears, then it becomes a, a, poly a polynomial. So, uh, but in our case, we need to kind of generalize this concept. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention. Um, uh, uh, I, I need to also mention so-called Mollian series. Um, a Mollian series is a tool to calculate the number of uh, uh, number of invariant uh, space, uh, the dimension of the invariant space, and uh, it says the formula uh, is given here. It says that uh, if you consider the generating uh, Function of the number of linearly independent homogeneous invariants of cert a certain representation of a group with degree d, then the generating function can also be uh, written as a finite sum in this sense uh, by choosing uh, by running over all elements of the group. And with Mollian theorem, a corollary of Ronnie's theorem is that. If you consider the Mollian series of the complex Clifford group where the genus uh, approximates infinity, then the Mollian theorem will converge to the generating series of uh, the, the generating function of the binary W, w even self dual codes. Well, binary is that we over working over F2, W even means 
all weights are a multiple of four and self due is already spent before. Um, but in our case, uh, we are working on the complex Clifford group and the polynomials, they have complex variables. Uh, so, so we need to generalize the earlier result. That is, we need to generate, uh, and uh, similarly, the uh, Ronnie theorem will also be generalized. That is, we will consider a generalization of linear codes. That's that the the the, the code now has the length has two parts, n1 and n2. The n1 is for the usual variable uh, path and uh, uh, all the analytic parts, uh, and uh, n2 is for the uh, complex conjugate of these variables. And uh, the definition of weight is slightly changes that you can uh, calculate the number of non-zero entries in the first n1 entries minus the number of non-zero entries in the last n2 entries. And uh, the, the also uh, definition of orthogonal is also uh, similarly modified is that the first part you find the inner product and the last n2 part you uh, calculate the inner product and you take their uh, submission. So essentially this is not a inner terminal, but it's still a bilinear form. And the dual definition of dual code is almost the same. You can still use this bilinear form to define uh, the dual. So in this way, uh, Ronnie's theorem can be generalized. Uh, surely we also need to uh, generalize the, the complex uh, weight, complete conjugate weight enumerator. So aside from those uh, variables, which in, uh, appears in the first N1 entries, you add the, the other N2 entries in the later and uh, you add those uh, complex conjugate gates over those variables. So this is also a polynomial, but with complex conjugate or variables with as well as their complex conjugates. So now in this sense, we get a characterization of the uh, homogeneous complex conjugates invariance of complex Clifford group. And uh, if uh, the space of homogeneous complex conjugate invariance of degree N1, N2, N1 is the degree of those variables um, analytic part and uh, N2 is the, those variables which are with complex conjugates. Uh, of, for the complex Clifford group IM of genus M, it is still spanned by the so-called complete conjugate weight uh, enumerators, where the codes are ranging over all binary W even self two codes of length N1 at plus N2. So, uh, now we also need to generalize Molian theorem because Molian theorem is uh, oh, does not have the co complex conjugate part. Uh, this kind of subject was already uh, investigated by a physicist called Fogger. Uh, sure, uh, but we also uh, find the similar ideas which have been uh, investigated by Roy S. Scott, uh, earlier mentioned also who investigates uh, unitary design. Uh, there for, uh, for Roy Scott, they kind of use this concept, but only for unitary, uh, uh, unitary group case. But uh, the Fogger series, it's kind of work, uh, it's, it's already stated for general groups. So he will take this form. So it's a generalization of Mollian series is that you consider uh, the uh, homogeneous invariance, but so with complex homo, homo holomorphic degree and also anti-holomorphic degree. And now uh, it has the variable T as well as T bar. And uh, the generic function, it can also be expressed by a finite sum over the uh, group elements with uh, this, uh, uh, this formula. So now we apply this uh, theorem to the complex Clifford group, we can find the, the generating, uh, the, the limit of generating function. And uh, the Fogel theory of the complex Clifford group will converge to the 
uh, generate function of bin binary WSL even do codes of length n1 plus n2. And uh, as you can see, it has the variable t and t bar. So the, uh, the, the coefficients, they form a array. But so if we consider diagonal terms only, then uh, you, they, you will get this part. And uh, uh, those, uh, these coefficients, uh, their meaning is the number of binary W even self two codes. And for, uh, for length up to t, uh, six plus six, uh, we can kind of exhaust all, all such codes. So we get these coefficients. And uh, the point here is that you have a two here at four and a two here at five. So, uh, and uh, for well, coefficient for the uh, one, two, three, they are all one. And uh, this is the, the, uh, the, uh, the po polynomial which appear here is essentially kind of the norm of the, uh, the norm function. And here it will appear one more function, but for five, there is no other one. So if we take a, a zero of the new uh, polynomial here and take an orbit of that uh, point for the uh, over those uh, over the Clifford group over the complex sphere, then uh, since it's a zero, you will also neutralize that polynomial. So you will get the same average over the finite set as well as the, the whole complex sphere. And the things that there is no more polynomial appear in degree five. So the you get a four, uh, four design and it automatically become a five design. And uh, the last part is uh, I have mentioned how to construct the pro complex projective four design on U4. And uh, uh, we can also construct the unit four design on U4 for, by complex Clifford group. Uh, the idea is similar to previous talk, but so I will not uh, explain it here again. Uh, you kind of replace the unitary group by a, a group and uh, its subgroup, uh, but not as just or, or in general designs on compact groups. So uh, here are some examples of unitary four design on U4. Here you can see that the design by uh, finite group SP43, uh, which is obtained by Banana, Nakara, Mi, and uh, Yan Zhu, is of size uh, four four. Uh, it's kind of this large. And uh, now, if uh, we choose the de uh, design by complex Clifford group, it kind of kind of shrink it by a fourth. And uh, in general, uh, we also uh, and I also mentioned we have a general inductive construction. If you use that constructing directory, uh, so you will get a very large design, but uh, anyway, that is a general uh, construction. But uh, if you can, if you use complex Clifford group, you will get a much smaller design, which is better for to use. And uh, this is all my talk. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for this very interesting, nice talk. Well, actually, the sizes of T4 design are amazing. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Right, yeah. Okay. Are, are there any questions to the? Yeah. Can I have a question? Yeah. Can sure. I ask yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I have a question on Forger series you mentioned on yeah. page sixteen. Yeah. Yes. So you wrote. Yeah. You wrote. Uh, oh no, no. Next page. Next page. Yeah, you wrote that the Fourier series converges to the generating function. But if I understand correctly, that uh, Fourier series is equal to the generating function if uh, they, here, they both uh, both consider the formal power series. Is my understanding incorrect? Uh, well, uh, exactly speaking, uh, uh, let me. Uh, go back to here. Uh, here you can see that uh, the space is spanned by 
uh, those complete weight and numerators, but it's a, mm -hmm. it is not necessarily linearly independent. So when uh, yeah. M, uh, the genus M gets large, they are linearly yeah. independent. Mm -hmm. So that's where yeah. the converge comes in. Here, so, so the converge means that M goes to infinity. And uh, uh. Uh, for each uh, complex group of a particular genus, you get a Fogel mm -hmm. series, and uh, mm. the coefficients are uh, monotonically increasing, and essentially, eventually, they will converge to this uh, the genus function of that binary W even self glucose. Yeah, this is what it means. Mm. Uh, so, I, so the, you mean the for sufficiently large degree, the coefficients of two series coincide? Is that what you mean? Um, I mean, for 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 each uh, for complex triple good, it's a, a, a family of groups, chi m, and uh, ah, each so one you can com compute. You, ah, I see, I see. Yeah, let m goes to infinity. Ah, let m goes to infinity. I see. I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Ten. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Well, if not, then uh, let us send uh, again. Now we have a little bit more details about Clifford Group. Thank you very much. It was a really very nice talk. Thank you.